Maybe you can just clone the nose, as Woody Allen would say. But we can't, and here's why. Let's have a closer look at what's going on when that regeneration blastema, or group of cells at the tip, starts to really do its trick. So there's the amputation plane of a really uh, uh, early stage in which all those cells have moved up. And inside that blastema are cells that are differentiating, that come from a number of different sources within the stump, an epithelium that closes over, dedifferentiated cells that are probably stem cells, and extracellular matrix that holds the whole thing together. Those are the players. Now, what we know from some beautiful experiments that were done by Jeremy Brox and Ellie Tanaka is that you can label cells from the unamputated limb that are, in fact, muscle stem cells. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about those in a minute. And those can actually go in, can be re-injected into this amputated stump. And then they will actually begin to form part of the uh, regenerating limb. And if we label those, we can see what they become. And what you're seeing here is that muscle stem cells became cartilage. And in another picture, you see here that muscle stem cells became skin. So this tells you that there is some potency within the regenerating limb that allows cells to make decisions about being things that they normally weren't going to do if this traumatic event hadn't happened. And this kind of plasticity is something that is extremely um, interesting to biologists because it's the key to understanding how it is that stem cells in the adult are capable of recapitulating some of that marvelous um, potency that we found in the embryo. So I'm going to leave you then before questions with this question of why we can't regenerate missing body parts. Is it because we're missing certain kinds of signals? Is it because there aren't enough stem cells? What are the reasons? And what we'll hopefully do after questions is then to explore some of the mechanisms that we have discovered in this fast moving field to solve some of these mysteries. So let's take some questions. Why was the newt not able to regenerate, complete, like the arm to regenerate a complete newt? I, I'm sorry if I didn't make it clear. The question was, why isn't the arm capable of regenerating the whole newt? Well, there are a couple of, in, of answers to that. Number one, as you'll see, an arm, as you can imagine, is a very complicated structure. Planaria are extraordinary, but they're not as complicated. The second point is that because of our complicated structure, we need nerves and blood vessels and other kinds of cells that float around our body to maintain life. And so basically, it's impossible to keep that little newt limb alive long enough for it to grow back anything. But there's another reason. We think that the information that you need to grow back a limb isn't actually in the limb. And We'll get to that in the next session. Now, let's see how good I'm at this. I'm really, hand-eye coordination is not my specialty. Yes? Could we take a newt's stem cells and implant them in a human's body, or would that, like, with the DNA not match her? Well, um, we could do that. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Uh, for all sorts of reasons, yeah. one of which is that uh, we are trained as highly evolved immunocompetent organisms to reject things like newt cells unless we're in the process of eating them, which we're not going to do either. So I think to get to your question in a little more detail, the issue of whether a stem cell from one species can function in the context of another species is something that we're going to hear about a little more from Doug tomorrow. But suffice it to say that there are experiments that have been done in the culture dish where newt cells and mouse cells have been put together. And the question is, does the newt teach the mouse cell how to do some of the tricks it can do? Or does the mouse cell tell the newt cell, forget it, brother. <laughs> I'm the boss here. And the answer is, the newt cell wins. So that's the exciting and encouraging thing. Yes. Sorry, I can't even throw. When people have surgery to lengthen limbs, like when they separate the bones and then the bones grow back into them, why can't they just like put stem cells there to make, like, and 
when that happens, is there more muscle? Like, how does that, like, why, if there's an absence of stem cells there, then how is it growing? How, sorry, which, which part are you, which part is growing? I didn't quite the, catch when, that. When they separate the bones and then the bones grow back to you? Ah. Well, interestingly enough, bones are some of the most regenerative structures in our body. And they actually grow back better than muscle. So for instance, if you crush your leg in an accident and the bone is broken, your doctor will say, no problem about growing your bone back. That will heal, and it will actually form the bone as it was before due to all sorts of signals that the bone somehow senses, much like the newt. The muscle just isn't as regenerative, and we don't understand what it is about different tissues that make it one more regenerative and another less, but we suspect that it may have something to do with stem cells. And that's the big excitement about stem cells, that if you could understand how stem cells in one part of your body can do such a great job, and, and your other uh, organs don't seem to be able to do such a good job, could you use stem cells from one part of your body to cure the other? And I'm going to be talking about that after the break. I want to get someone in the back, because I want to show that I can throw, as well as Doug. <laughs> <laughs> There, that's better. <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. Somebody back there. The guy in black. Um, can newts like regenerate um, organ systems or is it just arms? Newts can regenerate organ systems. Newts can regenerate um, an extraordinary number of different parts. And in fact, what we'll see tomorrow is another example of a highly regenerative organism, the fish, which can regenerate its fins, its tail, and its heart, as can the newt. Not the entire heart, but a large chunk. The newt can regenerate its lower jaw if you cut that off. It gets gruesome after that, but it's an amazing little organism. Oh, OK, let's take one from over there, the fellow with the blue shirt. Um, in the example of the newt, would there be a specific um, resource uh, limit as to how many limbs that a newt could regenerate according to its resources? Um, What's extraordinary about the newt is that, sadistic as it may seem, you can cut a regenerated limb off as many times as you can stomach the process, and it will grow back every time exactly the same way. So it appears that the newt has the whole process well sussed out and can do it exactly the same way. It's a very robust program, if that's what you meant. So it appears that there isn't some sort of a stem cell pool or some kind of a molecule that runs out after the first regenerative event. Now I've got to do some more embarrassing throws to get one over here. <laughs> yep, that's terrible. And this one, I'm going to do relay, because it's too embarrassing. <laughs> OK, uh, let's go for the lady in light blue. In the newt, like, what triggers the stem cells to go to like, a wound to form the last dimmer? That's a very good question. And we believe that there are a series of acute uh, signals that occur immediately after the wound has been, uh, has been created uh, that tell the organism that there's been a traumatic event, much like a wound healing response. But that second uh, event in which instead of just closing the wound and remaining a stump like an amputee that would happen if my arm was cut off, there seems to be another set of signals that we would dearly love to know about. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of them in the second half of my talk. Now, I'm afraid that's it for questions. All right. Let's go on. So the question is why we can't grow back a limb. Obviously, there are many questions in the audience that pertain to this. And anticipating those questions, I thought I would just put up a picture of what actually is inside your limb. And this is a simplified artistic version of it. But as you can see, it's a very complex structure. And therefore, when we consider the way in which the salamander grows back its limb, we really need to think in terms of how these various complex structures know to become what they are. And one possible reason why we can't do this trick is because of the risk of cancer. And I'm going to talk about each of these in turn, but two others are that we've lost programs that help us to regenerate 
our bodies, or that we simply don't have enough stem cells, such as the planaria, who's full of them. So let's look at the one about cancer. Now, why do I bring this up? Any cell